that you will be the Christ that this baby sees. I challenge you that this baby will never experience lack. I challenge God, parent, that you will make sure that you fill in the gap. If you accept that challenge, say, we do.
to not say thank you. Amen. So we can't come to church and be rude with God. We ought to come and tell them thank you.
awesome God we serve. Truly worthy to be praised. Amen? Do you believe that today? That he's worthy to be praised. All right. Let me go to work today. Um, I'm in a series in the book of Job. And um, I thought I would be done by now, but the Holy Spirit said, just keep on preaching it. So I'm much obliged to the Holy Spirit and be obedient. Job chapter 1. And um, we'll look at Job chapter 1 and read a little bit from Job chapter 2, beginning with um, verse number 20. When you have it, go ahead and stand on your feet just so we can all be on one accord. Those of you who are capable. If uh, you don't have your Bible today, look on the screen. And there you shall see these words. Bishop Dr. Yarbrough, lead us in our reading today. Job 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. Let's get a little bit of Job chapter 2 and see what happens after the Lord touches his body. Verse, believe, number 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did Job sin not with his lips. We want to look carefully at verse 21. Job says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. I want to talk for just a few minutes on the topic. How to praise God when you're naked. Talk to him, pal. Why tonight? My brothers and sisters, when the Bible uses the term naked, it's talking about that which is normally covered up that has been uncovered. It's speaking of those things that you desire to be hidden that become exposed. It's talking about a state and a place of being where you cannot defend yourself. It's your place of vulnerability. Nakedness means you don't have your degrees, don't have your last name, your money, your education, your family connection. Nakedness means it's just you and God. It's the place where the things that you don't want folk to know about you Come on now. are seen very vividly. Come on. We get up in the morning. Yeah. We put on clothes that accent us. Come on. Have I got a witness in here? Come on, man. There are some things you know you can't wear. Yeah. 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 And there are other things you know make you look good. Yeah. Or at least better. Have I got a witness in here? Come on, man. And so, we would like to present our very best self. When you get up in the morning, you want to present your very best self. As I'm here today, yeah. I would have liked to give you a, a much better looking preacher, but I gave you the very best that I had. I do lighten up in the winter, but y'all got to... 
to wait for those months to fully get here. So, so we bring our very best self, and we present our very best self, and we walk around with our very best self. But all of us have some things, some issues, some components of us that we really don't want people to focus on or to look at. Now one thing I've learned, those of you who are educators, those of you who work in the school system, is that children can be very honest. Don't become a teacher if you don't want a child to tell you some truth about yourself. Grown folk will look at you every day with that mold on your face and not say a word. But your first day of substitute teaching, come on, talk to me again. What's that thing on your face? Do it, Mike. Come on, man. And that's the innocence of children that they just call it like this. Sometimes it can almost feel cruel, but we get we are conditioned as adults as we get older to try to not point out folks' failures or their or their frailties. We try to stay away from those things that may hurt their feelings. And what we do is what we do is we, we put on our very best self when we get up in the morning and we walk out and we want folk to see us a certain way. And you want folk to see you in your very best self. But what happens? When your co-workers, when your friends, when your family have to look at the real you. And what if the real you has been lost by what you've been covering it up with? In other words, you've got to understand that an outfit helps to find certain things about you, but your outfit should never be you. Don't lose yourself in the outfit. And some of us have lost ourselves in trying to cover the, in the covering or trying to be the covering. The covering is just there to accent who you are. It should never be the totality of who you are. You are not your car. You are not your house. You are not your outfit. You are not your outfit. You are and you gotta be careful with folk who have lost themselves in their covering because everything begins with their covering. They'll bring basic conversation and turn it back to their house. Have I got a witness in here? I mean, you sit there talking about Christmas and we thinking that we gonna go ahead and get put a tree up. You gonna put a tree up? Yeah, because I need an eight foot tree because I got big sinners in my house. So, Joe is at a place in his life where the Lord breaks him down from all of his stuff. And the Bible says that all ten of his children died on the same day. He loses all of his possessions. He goes from being a millionaire to being a beggar in one day. And he teaches us something in the response of the worst day of his life. The Bible says that Job simply got up, tore off his fancy clothes. Have I got a witness in here? He, he realized that I, I don't need this, this, this outfit right here. He rented his outfit and he shaved his head. And he fell down to worship the Lord. And in his worship moment, he declared, naked came out into the world. And naked shall I return. Job says, I understand where I am right now. He said, I understand that I'm at a place that I need and I don't but I'm still all right. Job says, he says, I recognize where I am. I'm, I'm not where I was. Come on. I realize that I don't have nothing now. He says, I'm, I'm content with the fact Thank you. that I didn't have nothing once before. And when I die, I ain't gonna have nothing. I don't care what you got, you can't take it to the grave with you. Come on now. Have I got a witness in here? Come on, come on. Come on. 
Come on. He said, when I got here, I ain't have nothing. When I leave, I can't take nothing with me. He said, so I need to be content the same as if I, as same as I was when I was born. What do you mean, Joe? When the baby is born, the baby is not embarrassed by what he got on. And y'all put the outfits on the baby. The baby didn't ask for no outfit. Have I got a witness in here? When a baby is born, a baby is not looking for no outfit, no joy. The baby could care less. You putting the joys on the baby make you feel better. Baby can't even walk. What do you need joys from? Our support. Nobody wear them, no baby wear them white shoes no more, do they? I'm going somewhere. I want to deal with this nakedness and we be out of here. Can I teach for a minute? Anybody who's ever dealt with sickness or illness, you need to hear this sermon. Go ahead. Because I'm going to deal with some stuff in chapter 2. Before I get there, I gotta deal with this nakedness. I gotta deal with nakedness. Look at your neighbor and say, naked. How did they respond? I gotta deal with these spirits in here that ain't quite right. I'm saying naked and they mind is just all over the place. I'm talking about spiritual nakedness, not carnality. Are y'all with me here? I'm talking about nakedness means exposure. Somebody say exposure. Let me show you what God said about nakedness. In Genesis chapter something. That's how they call scripture. Chapter something first, the other thing. Chapter 3, <laughs> verse number 7. <laughs> listen, listen, listen to what happened. Let me show you this. this. At the beginning of time, God dealt with this nakedness. Read. And the eyes of both of them were open. Uh -huh. And they knew that they were naked. Okay? Adam and Eve's eyes were open after they ate of the fruit. And the first thing they knew was what? What was the first thing that Adam and Eve knew? That they were naked. The first thing they saw is their own vulnerability. The first thing they saw after disobeying God was their own state and condition. The first thing they saw after their disobedience to God's will in their way was their fact that they were disconnected from God because they had been naked but they just now noticed it. Now I gotta show you something because the devil's whole idea is to show you your nakedness and the reason why he wants to show you your nakedness is so that you will focus on you and not on God. The more you look at yourself, the more you become disappointed. Oh my God, I this in you're not what you used to be, that size six and four and all that stuff. Come on, talk back to me here. The fours and sixes are at the back of your closet. Come on, be honest with me and get it there. And the more you look at yourself, you have to be honest and say to yourself, God, I sure need you. <laughs> and they sew fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. When they noticed that they were naked, they made themselves an outfit. Y'all right. think y'all show. Right. But ain't none of y'all got a fig leaf two-piece. <laughs> they put it immediately. Listen to this. After this first sin in the Bible, right. their first action was to cover up right. their nakedness. was to cover up their nakedness free. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Listen, listen. And Adam and his wife, hold on, after you notice that you're naked, you begin to run 
from the voice of God. That's why some folk don't come to church. Come on now. Come on. Because they looked at themselves and said, oh man, I'm naked. Are y'all with me in here? So, so, so you're trying to stay out of the presence of God because you don't feel good about yourself. But can I tell you, he's everywhere present and nowhere absent. Keep reading. I'm going somewhere with this. And Adam and his wife uh -huh. hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Listen, you got a lot of folk hiding. They're hiding because they are naked. But God already knew you were naked. Matter of fact, he knew you were naked before you knew you were naked. You just discovered you were naked, but he been looking at you walking around the garden, eating everything else. Read. Among the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. And the Lord God called unto Adam. This is what I want you to hear. Listen. You got Adam. And said unto him, uh -huh. where art thou? Where are you? Now listen, God is, this is a rhetorical question that the Lord is asking. He's not asking Adam where are you so that God can discover where he is. He's asking him so Adam can have self-discovery. So sometimes God will ask you where you are just so you can take inventory on your own self. He's really saying you need to tell me where you are because I can see where you are. Keep reading. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. I was afraid. Wait, 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 wait. I heard, I heard your voice, God. I've heard your voice so many times before, but this time when I heard your voice, I was afraid. Adam, why was you afraid? Adam answers the question. Because I was naked. Woo! Come on, come on. Come on now. I was naked, yes. so I hid myself. So when we are naked, we hide ourselves. When we have things that we're not proud of, when we have stuff that we don't want folk to know about, when we're disappointed in ourselves, we hide. So if you, you go through a divorce, so you go and hide. Mm -hmm. you, you got fired. And you don't want folks asking you about what happened, so you go and hide. You done relapsed, and so now you're going into hiding. Mm -hmm. and, and so now, uh, because you think that folks are going to be looking at you, and you don't want them to really analyze your mess and analyze the stuff that you're in, you go into hiding. But, wait a minute, I like what, I like what happens here. This is important. Read the very next verse. This is important. This is the most important verse. And he said, this is God talking. Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you? Ask your name, who told you you was naked? Who told you? Because before today, your nakedness has never been an issue. So somebody had to tell you. Come on, now. Come on. Listen, I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay here. Come on, now. Come on, now. Who told you? Yes, sir. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. Nakedness has a purpose. It is so that you will be in touch with your own reality. But what happens when the devil tries to shame you in your nakedness so that he can hold you captive from being what God wants you to be? It's getting hot in here. So take off. I'm just kidding. I do want you to take off your mask. I do want to take off, take off your insecurities. I think God is calling us to a place of self-exposure. Meaning you don't wait for folk to tell on you. You go ahead and tell on yourself. Am I talking to anybody here? 
Because you got to be so comfortable with yourself when you're willing to admit, Lord, no, I got a problem. Lord, no, I got some issues. And I'm not at church because I'm perfect. I'm at church because I'm naked. I was talking to the ministers this morning, my ministry team. Yeah. And I told them, I said, listen, I'm at a point in my life, I'm at a point in my ministry, I'm at a point where I understand that if you don't deal with some things, they will deal with you. Come on. And what has happened is we have run from so many things. We, you know, you got those things in your family that folk don't like to talk about. Come on. Those family secrets. That Come on. Everybody know about, but can't nobody talk about. It. Yeah. And what happens is it keeps us in bondage. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, how liberating it is when we can stand flat-footed and say, "I miss the mark." Yeah. So here's the part. This is this is the part. You have folk who get married, yeah, but they are basing their marriage. On the Cosby show. Yeah. And didn't know what Bill Cosby was doing. Yeah. And and we have we have too many couples yeah. that are faking it. giving false pretense of what marriage really is. Because we're not willing to be honest and tell some folk what you done went through in your marriage. And so y'all sitting there looking at each other and holding hands and got shirts on pointing at each other. I'm with him, I'm with her. Have I got to wear matching blouses on? He's in her watches. Have I got to wear this in her? And no, he got some stuff that y'all need to deal with. And so my wife would cover me and pray for me. 
And when I fell into a moment of foolishness, yeah. come on, come on. I don't act like I know no more. Yeah. Matter of fact, ask your neighbor, have you ever fallen into a moment of foolishness? Sir? Go and ask man. Have you ever tell the truth? Have you ever fallen into a moment of foolishness? I mean, one of them situations where you say, uh, I want to do more. So a moment of foolishness, the first thing you do is you go into protective mode for self-preservation. And what's crazy is you start putting on extra clothes so we don't to see your nakedness. And there are some folk who are so good, God Almighty, make, don't, don't air this on TV. Don't put this on YouTube or cut this part out. This is just for the folk that are here. Thank you. 